Madman Don Draper once advised that if you don't like what's being said, then change the conversation. And over at Romney campaign headquarters in Boston, they must be getting the message. Because all week long they've been telling us this campaign isn't about Mitt Romney's tax returns. This campaign isn't about his playing fast and loose with the truth about his record at Bain. This campaign is about, well, you take a listen. In the past, people of both parties understood that encouraging achievement, encouraging success, encouraging people to lift themselves as high as they can, encouraging entrepreneurs, celebrating success instead of attacking and denigrating makes America strong. That's the right course for this country. His course is extraordinarily foreign. So there you have it. This campaign isn't about Mitt Romney's record or his secretiveness. It's about Barack Obama not being a real American. Or to borrow Mitt Romney's euphemism, it's about the president being foreign. So let's move past the propaganda here and bring in MSNBC contributor and top economist Jared Bernstein. He lives, he joins us now live from Washington, D.C., where he lives as well. Uh, okay. Jar Jared, before we get to anything else, there's one big lie that Romney's folks are peddling this week. It's the ideal, of course, that the president is going around saying that Henry Ford didn't create Ford Motors and Papa John didn't create Papa John's. <laughs> Come on now. Please tell us why are they lying about the man in this way? Uh, I, I guess because the election season has gone from silly to ridiculous. Uh, what the president was saying is actually quite important, and it's something that distinguishes the two candidates in a useful way. If you think about things that are good for business, that businesses can't do for themselves, public infrastructure, roads, bridges, water systems, communication systems, air travel, if you think about the quality of the workforce, obviously a big connection to public education there. Those are essential parts of our, of our public goods. And entrepreneurs will tell you very forthrightly how important those are to their success. The president was saying uh, under one candidate, under, under his policies, those public goods would get due attention. But under uh, a, a Romney presidency, based on the budgets that he himself has promoted and endorsed, uh, those kinds of public goods would be terribly underfunded. Yeah, that's uh, certainly something that we need to keep hammering at here. Uh, you know, I've been listening to uh, Mitt Romney talk for about a year now, and I always hear him say, I understand the economy, I understand the economy. <laughs> but I still don't know what he means by that exactly. Can you tell us what Mitt Romney says when he means when he says he understands economy? Because yeah. I just don't get it. I, I wrote a piece about that back in January, and I said, I, the way I said, does he understand the economy like Paul Krugman understands the economy, or like you know Art Laffer understands the economy? <laughs> right. You know, uh, I, I think that w what he understands the economy, I think from the vantage point of a private equity investor. And again, I think the president was correct in saying. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being a good, successful private equity investor if your goal is to enrich your shareholders. When you're in the White House, you're actually having to work quite hard to push back against some of the kinds of impacts that private equity investors have. For example, uh, they have very, very high leverage that funds their deals. They get to write off the uh, tax payment. They get to write off the interest that they pay against their tax payments. That's why you got a guy like Mitt Romney paying a 15 percent tax. Tax rate. You know, they're very, uh, they're associated with offshoring jobs. All legitimate business practices that enrich shareholders, you know, in the top reaches of the income scale, but really don't do anything for the middle class. Yeah, not at all. And, <laughs> and, and this is something else that's so intriguing to me. Mitt Romney likes to pretend that he doesn't need the government. He didn't need any help, you know, making hundreds of millions of dollars at Bain Capital. But private equity depends on massive amounts of debt. The government essentially gives PE firms a subsidy by making that that debt tax deductible. So Correct. let me ask you, would Mitt Romney be such a big success if he didn't get government welfare and handouts? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't say. What I can say is that uh, the government uh, has been extremely uh, good to the private equity industry in precisely the way you mentioned. Let's just make sure we unpack this now. It, 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 in private equity, when they acquire a firm, the reason they're able to make such very high returns is that they're generally not okay. using much of their own money at all. They're using borrowed money. Any interest that they pay against that debt, they then deduct from their tax liability. So it's, it's a huge tax boon for, uh, for those uh, investors. 
Look, very briefly, what do you think is in t uh, Mitt Romney's tax returns? Why is he so secretive? Do you think he didn't pay a bunch of money? What, what's going on there? I really don't know, but there's starting to be some thought, and I think this may be correct, that it's not that he paid 15 percent, that he may have paid something like 1 or 2 percent. I mean, there are years in which people uh, with those kinds of investments, there are people with years of those kinds of investments that, that really have, you know, because of their capital losses, really have very, very tiny tax liabilities. That may be what, what he's trying to protect there. Yeah. Ability to lie, liability, we'll talk about it. Our thanks to Jared Bernstein for joining us here today.